Okay, let's continue on with our study of probability. And as I said before, probability is a branch of mathematics all unto itself. But we're not going to go into all that. There are three things, though, that you should know. And these are the multiplication rule, the addition rule, and the binomial theorem. The multiplication rule, you could I also call the and rule. The addition rule is the or rule, or it's technically the either or rule, and that'll make sense in a little bit. And the binomial theorem answers the questions, how many ways can you, and you'll understand that in a second too. So first, let's pretend that you have 16 marbles, and 5 of them are red and 11 of them are blue. And someone asks you, uh, how, what is the probability of picking first a blue one and then a red one? At first glance, you'd be tempted to say, hey, this is easy. I remember from the last video of probability is how many ways there is to do something over the total number of ways. So how many ways are there to pick a blue marble from this bucket of 16 marbles? And you say, well, there's 11 of them, so 11 out of 16. And similarly, you would say, well, for the red ones, there are five red ones in there, and there's 16, so it's got to be five out of 16. But it is, of course, not that easy. And let me sh let's actually do it so we can see why that's the case. So first, you are asked to pull out a marble, and you do. And it's blue, and how many ways were there to do that? Well, there were 11 out of 16. Now, what about the red marble? Well, there's 5 out of 16, but no, there really isn't. Remember, we removed a marble, so now there's only 15 marbles left, so it would be 5 out of 15. So what happened here? Well, we did not put this marble back in the pot. We did not replace it. And so these are not really independent events because the probability of this one depends on what happened before it, right? If we had pulled out a red marble initially, then it wouldn't be 5 out of 15. There would be 4 red marbles left in a pot of 15 marbles. It would be 4 out of 15. So it's not independent. If this is a little complicated, don't worry about it. I'm just showing this to you to, so you can kind of get an understanding that sometimes one probability can depend on the other. But we're not going to look at those. We're only going to look at independent events. So let's put this blue marble back and let's try this another way. So we'll ask the same question again. How many, you know, what is the probability of getting a blue one first and then a red one? So you're going to take a marble out. And how many ways were there to get that blue marble? Well, we knew there were 11 to start with out of a total of 16. So it is 11 out of 16. Now what's different than the previous example is we're going to put this marble back. We're going to replace it. And now look, we have a pot again of 16 marbles, five of which are red and 11 of which are blue. Now how many ways are there to get a red out of there? Five, one, two, three, four, five out of 16. So we took a red one out of the pot of 16, five out of 16. So here we did have a replacement. And because we did put that first marble back in the pot, we returned it back to its initial uh, state. Uh, the second marble draw had nothing to do with the first one because this one and this one were drawn from the exact same pool of marbles. So they are independent of each other. This one does not depend on what was drawn first. Okay, all that said, we are not going to deal with uh, non-independent events now. We're just going to do with, deal with independent events. So now let's talk about the multiplication rule. And what that does is it means that if you want to ask... What is the probability of something happening and something else happening? You just take the probabilities of each one of those things and you multiply them. That's why we say and, and that's why it's called the multiplication rule. So the probability of picking a blue one and then picking a red one is going to be the probability of picking a blue one multiplied by the probability of picking a red one. So that's 11 sixteenths times 5 sixteenths, and that comes out to 55 over 256, or 0.21, or 21 percent. So that's the and rule, the multiplication rule. If you want to know what the probability of one thing and something else happening is, you and they are independent events, that is, they don't depend on each other, then you multiply them. So in this case where we did not have replacement, we can't use that rule. But we're only going to be talking about independent events here. Okay, now let's look at the addition rule. So in this previous example, what I had asked was, what is the probability of getting a blue one and then getting a red one? Now what I'm going to ask 
is what is the probability of getting a blue and a red in any order? Initially, I said you have to first get a blue and then a red. Now I'm saying get a blue and a red uh, in any order. So there's really only two ways you could do this. And we're going to do it with replacement. So you can either draw a blue first, then a red, or you can get a red first and then a blue. So what is the probability of getting a blue marble? It's 11 out of 16. What is the probability of getting a red one? It's 5 out of 16. Now, as you guessed, this or is going to mean that we're going to add the probabilities. And so we have two things going on here. We're using both rules, multiplication and addition. We're saying you can either get a blue and a red or a red and a blue. So this mathematically would translate to getting a blue and a red. So there's a multiplication happening here or getting a red and a blue with a multiplication habit here. And in between, we have that addition. And this probability would be about 43%, 110 over 256, or 0 0.428. And I know you're thinking, marbles are great and all, but what does this have to do with anything? Well, we do use probability a lot. We're going to be using it throughout evidence-based medicine, but let me show you how we're going to use it in genetics. So say we have two parents, uh, a mom and a dad, and they want to have children, but they're afraid that there's a disease that runs in their family. So they ask you about it. Are, is our kid going to get this whenever we decide to have a kid? What's the probability of that happening? And so the parents undergo genetic testing, and they uh, get the following results. They are both carriers. They both have one healthy allele for that gene, and they have one disease allele for that gene. So if they have kids, we don't know which gene from mom the kids are going to get or which f the gene from dad the kids are going to get. So let's figure out what all the possibilities are. And here they are. They can either both get the, the kid can either get two healthy uh, alleles, can get one healthy one and one not healthy one, or both unhealthy ones. And let's say for this disease, it's a recessive disease. So the, if they are unlucky to get both, then, this, then that patient that kid is going to develop the disease. So what are the ways that a kid will be born and will be healthy? Well, they can either have two of the healthy alleles, or they could have one healthy allele and one unhealthy allele. So what's the probability of getting this? Well, if we look over here, it's one out of four. And what's the probability of getting uh, one of each being heterozygous? You can have this one or this one. So it's two out of four. And so since we said this was an or situation, we're going to be using our addition rule. And so if we add these numbers up, we get three out of four. And if we look at this, that was you know, pretty obvious because we have one, two, three ways to be healthy out of a total of four. So yes, this was a bit of a simple example, but it demonstrated the addition rule here. So the two things you should have gotten out of this video is the multiplication rule and the addition rule, the AND rule and the OR rule. And in the next one, we'll talk about the binomial theorem.